Um, okay, so uh, today we're going to look at beta 9 of MetaReal Stage, um, and this is really kind of getting started with it now. So just a quick overview of, uh, of what we're going to cover. Um, we're going to start with a intro, user interface overview, and then I'm going to take a little step back, um, and we'll go through some of the sort of photography guidelines um, for shooting uh, panoramas uh, for MetaReal Taurus um, and floor plans. Then I'm going to step through with PowerPoint kind of tour editing workflow. Um, and I will be keeping an eye, we will be keeping an eye on chat. So um, uh, let me know if there's any trouble hearing what I'm saying. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to jump in. Um, and you can see Isabel's on the, on the chat there as well. Um, so after the photography guidelines, we're going to skip into a sort of overview uh, of the tour editing workflow and the major steps. Then we're going to deep dive into the room editor, the tour editor, um, and uh, finally publishing your tour once you've uh, once you've edited. So uh, with that, I'm going to pop over to to Metareal. Um, all right. So here I am. Uh, this is I've, I've logged into Metareal stage. So there's a project browser. Here I've got, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of projects in my account. Obviously, if you have a new account, you won't have all these projects. Um, there's a video tutorial available at the top here. Uh, you can install a sample project from here. And in fact, we'll be updating this sample project with the project I'm going to show you today uh, following this, uh, this webinar. A um, bunch of different ways to view. You can either view as thumbnails, or if you've got a lot of projects, you can actually view the, the screen as a list view. Um, there's some controls. Um, you've got the ability to manage tags. So here I can create um, uh, new tags. Um, uh, which allow me to set custom properties on individual tours. So if I've got a, a, a large team or I need to sort my tours into ones that have finished or whatever kind of sorting um, I, I want to do, I can actually do that uh, with the Manage Tags tool. Um, uh, and I can also choose which information is visible. So I can have uh, parameters that are not necessarily being shown. Um, I can also add filters. So I can filter my projects uh, by project name. Um, and I can add various other filters uh, to that. So I'm just going to get rid of that frivolous tag. Uh, drop down, then delete. Okay, um, and back to here. And I'm going to open a project. Uh, this is the one we'll be working with today, the uh, Hotel Luxury Chalet. Um, now, this is at the moment it's a completed project. Um, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the most complex room in the project and we're going to reconstruct it. Uh, so this is uh, this screen is once you open a project we call this the project dashboard. Um, the section published versions actually only appears when you've got a, a published version. This is actually the link that you'll share uh, downstream with your customers for the actual tour. Um, so here I can actually go into uh, go into the tour. Um, so we, we won't take a look at that now. We'll come back to that later. Um, the top here we've got various buttons. We can export the tour uh, to various different file formats depending on uh, and that, which what's available there depends on your uh, subscription level. Um, here is the, the publishing tool. We'll come back to that later. And here we've got the nice big green friendly button, build it for me. So if you've uploaded panoramas and you don't want to bother with building a tour, you can actually just uh, contract our production team to do it. Have a couple of options. You can build a virtual tour. Um, um, and the pricing for panorama depends on your subscription level. Or you can order a high quality vector floor plan um, of, uh, of the tour. Um, so, and if you actually submit the job, that goes off to our production team, and you usually get it back within in, within 24, 48 hours. Um, here we have the attached assets section. Uh, this, in fact, is where you can attach uh, other content that isn't um, understood necessarily by MetaReal, um, but you want to associate with the project for organizational purposes. It's also where, when we do a high quality floor plan for you, the high quality floor plan is returned to you. So it'll appear as a PDF download link uh, under attached assets. Here are all the rooms I've created, um, and this is kind of the heart of the reconstruction process. We'll come back to that in a bit. And here are the source images. So um, I'm not going to upload images now, um, but basically if you click on this, you can actually choose images from Dropbox, Google Drive, or directly from a local file. 
Um, you need them to be equi rectangular panoramas. So for now, that's what we support. Um, here is the list of images that I previously uploaded. Um, and there's a bunch of things we can do. We can select them, um, which was useful for creating rooms. In a minute, I'm going to do that. We can also, a little upload button uh, on the top here allows us, um, if once you've created a tour, you decide you need to do some editing to one of the panoramas, you can actually edit it externally and then re-upload and replace the panorama. Um, uh, so you can do things like uh, any, any kind of tweak you want to make to the panorama, and you can actually replace it um, anywhere in the tour just by re-uploading it here. Finally, there's a little viewer icon at the bottom right. We've actually got a, a little um, a viewer. Um, uh, yeah, there's kind of some noise going on there. Maybe uh, we could, I think, is that people logging in? Maybe it's people logging in. Um, no, my fault, trying to sync my speakers. <laughs> OK, thanks, Justin. <laughs> so here we have basically a panorama viewer. Um, and we can uh, see them full size and actually explore them. So if you're building a tour, it sometimes helps to be able to see them a bit bigger than the little thumbnails. Um, so we've got a viewer for that there. And you can also select them from here. In fact, uh, uh, I'm going to go back. and uh, So I can, I'm actually going to select these guys here. So the room that I want is, I think, these six panoramas. In fact, before I go ahead and open it, I'm going to open the pre-built version. It's the salon. Um, and this is far and away the most complex room in this tour. Um, and that's really why I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, so here you can see we're in the room editor. Um, so by clicking on the pre-built room, I'm able to open the room editor and you can see uh, that I've got the tour already built. Images on this side um, in the tour, um, various kind of wireframe geometry elements showing me what, uh, what's reconstructed in the, uh, in the tour. We're going to come back to that in a bit. We've also got the uh, tour editor. And uh, the tour editor is where we assemble the rooms into the tour. So uh, here I've got a, um, a, uh, a partly built tour. I'm actually going to clear that before we come back to it. Tour editor, I have a list of the rooms down the left-hand side. Um, I have various views, plan view, model view, um, and the preview of the final tour. So this is where I can actually configure the, the, the once my rooms are all assembled together, my model's good, my navigation is good, I can go ahead and configure the final tour player UI. Um, uh, in this area, and also I can um, also add add labels um, and, and links to the tour if I want. So we're going to come back to that. I'm actually going to reset that tour to wipe that away now because we're going to rebuild that from scratch. Um, and so that's kind of the overview of the interface. Uh, there's a few other bits we'll touch in more detail in a minute. Um, I just want to step back um, and do a little uh, overview of the photography guidelines. Now, one of the main advantages uh, uh, for for MetaReal Stage is that you can use any camera you like. You know, you can use a either a 360 camera of some kind, and any 360 camera. You're not limited to the 360 cameras that are directly supported. Um, we just support anything that, that outputs accurate angular panoramas. Obviously, you can also use a DSLR if you've got a panographic it, and you can stitch your your panoramas externally. Um, long term, we plan to incorporate stitching as part of the process as well. But for now. Uh, you know, there are lots of good tools out there to do that. So uh, we encourage you to do that uh, with something like PTGUI. Um, but basically, you're free to use the equipment you've got. Um, there are some cameras that are at the lower end of the price range that do more distortion and warping when they're um, stitching uh, the, the panoramas together. And that can mean that you have a little bit less accuracy in your reconstruction. It'll never stop you being able to build your tour, but you may need to sort of relax your uh, expectations in terms of precision, in terms of aligning the panoramas with some of those cheaper cameras. Um, in terms of how many panoramas you need to shoot, we don't have any onerous requirements in terms of shooting every few feet or whatever. Um, you choose the number of panoramas you want to shoot based on the navigation that you want your tour to have. At a minimum, um, you probably need to shoot uh, kind of one panorama per room and and generally, that'll be sort of a line of sight from outside the room. So you could could shoot a pattern, have a shooting pattern, something like this. Um, if you want to do a bit more navigation, you might have a single panorama inside the room as well. Um, if you've got line of sight, you could even kind of link straight into the center of the room. If you've got larger spaces or you want to have more navigation within the room, um, 
you can add you can shoot shoot more panoramas but it's really up to you and you can control what kind of navigation you'll have between the panoramas um so basically line of sight between panoramas you rarely need to be closer than five meters unless you want to for sort of obstruction navigation purposes and really it's just a minimum of one panorama per enclosed space um uh, that's kind of that's kind of the limits there um okay so yeah, let's just uh, step and sort of look for a second at the high level for the tour creation workload. So um, what we're really talking about is um, a set of fairly linear steps. You can upload panoramas, um, create uh, rooms from the panoramas you've uploaded. So you group your panoramas into rooms and do the reconstruction. You assemble the rooms into a tour, and then you finalize the tour UI that you want to present to your downstream customers, and then you share it with your clients. Um, obviously, if you don't want to bother with all that bit in the middle, you can submit the job to Metareal and our production team will do it for you. Um, you know, that's maybe something that's interesting as you're getting started um, and uh, give you time to, to learn the tools um, and uh, get up to speed yourself. Things are pretty quick once you, once you know what you're doing. Um, so moving now to the room editor, I'm gonna actually go and uh, we're gonna select, we selected our panoramas here, we've got six panoramas. Um, we're going to hit new room. Um, and once we're in the room editor, there's a fairly specific sort of workflow that we recommend. Um, right now, I've got my panoramas loaded into my room, my new room on this side. We've got my room here. We're actually going to call it Salon Webinar, so we recognize it from the one we did before. Um, and there's six panoramas. In fact, there's one panorama here which is slightly outside the room space, but uh, I'll explain the reason for why later. Um, so in the room editor, there's a fairly specific uh, workflow. Um, we've got to choose a reference panorama, first of all. We want to align it with the world grid because the material construction and snapping tools get much faster and easier to use when the reference panorama is aligned with the world grid. We're going to level the reference panorama. We're going to draw the floor outline and maybe some volumes to help with snapping. We're going to level the remaining panels in the room. And then we're going to snap the panels to floor right now outline. Um, so let's get into that. So right now I'm looking to decide which is my best panel for uh, for uh, for my reference panel. And I think I'm going to use this guy. Uh, it's pretty close to the center of the room. Now it's an interesting room because you can see it's a double height room. Uh, lots of the floor corners are occluded. There's a staircase. Um, it's pretty complicated. Uh, so this is probably a half to two thirds of the time reconstructing this tour. The rest of the other rooms are simply one or two panoramas. Um, uh, I think the kitchen is, is is maybe three. So they go very quickly indeed. It's 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 pretty much a function of the number of, of panoramas in a room. So I'm gonna pop over here and hit make reference. Um, and now I've got a little R here that tells me it's my reference panorama. Um, and the first thing I want to do is align it to the world grid. So I'm going to press G, or in fact, I can go to here and switch on the grid. Um, and I can see, in fact, the panorama is fairly well aligned, but I'm actually going to go ahead and take this red line and very carefully align it to this wall. I'm hoping the building was actually built square. Um, if not, things get a little bit more complicated to reconstruct because we can't use the snapping. Um, and now I've aligned that to the world grid. I can hit G to get rid of it. I don't need it anymore. And the next thing I want to do is make sure my panorama is level. If I go to the leveling view, we can see that although we did our best uh, when we shot it, uh, the, uh, the panorama isn't quite level. You see these don't quite line up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop in here. And assuming that the building, it's a new building, so things, things should be fairly straight. Um, we can line that up there. I'm actually going to back to the panorama view to do this. Generally, with level lines, I tend to use windows and doors. They tend to be straighter than plaster corners. I don't know if it's something with, with, with plasterers um, not using plumb lines or whatever, but um, generally, it seems to be better to use things other than plaster corners uh, to do leveling. So now, if we go to leveling view and we sort of quickly zip around, we can see that all the verticals that we can see are lining up nicely. Uh, so. That means we're pretty good. I'm going to go to the plan view now, and we can see that there's no, I mean, it, look, it looks flat, it looks level, nothing's fading off uh, to the distance. So now we can go to our draw tool, second tool down here. Um, 
and we can start to draw the room outline. Now, the first thing to mention here is that we've got two protractors, um, which can be shown and snapped. And actually, if I use the one and two keys, I can switch them on and off without having to use go over and click on the menu. So now I'm going to actually go here and start here. I'm going to pick one to snap on the protractor. And now I can see that my lines are snapping to the 15 degree point. Um, over here, I can't see my corner. However, I can see the wall. So you can see over there, you can see the, so what I'm going to do is pop this point in and then pull it back to the wall corner. And now I can kind of see, thanks to the crosshair, I can see this point. And we know we need to be somewhere over here. So I'm just going to pull that out. Um, go back to the panorama view. First thing I'm going to do is lift my ceiling up to the ceiling height. So that's about there. It looks about right. And then, uh, look at that. I got it bang on. Um, I'm just going to nudge it a little bit into the corner there. And then now I've got this other corner, which I can't really see. It's somewhere there. I don't even. It's probably this point up here. What I can do is I can switch on both of my protractor snaps and just push that point into there. I don't need to know where it is. I know it's square. Um, so now I've got this corner line here. And in fact, that lines up nicely with this wall. We're going to cut a hole here for the upstairs staircase. Um, and we can see that we've got a nice square uh, space for our room. So that's uh, that's the sort of basic reference model um, built. Now, in order to snap the other panoramas into the space uh, correctly, I need probably need a little bit more. I could go ahead and do it now, but if I add a little bit more to the room, um, it'll make it easier to, to work out where I am when I'm snapping. So one of the things I'm going to do right away is switch off tractor, is add in some windows. Now, for the moment, these don't do a lot. What they do do is they'll show up to make sure they show up on the on the uh, floor plan as windows. Eventually, we want to do something um, something fancy with environments and and and, and glass, but uh, that's for a, a future version. Um, so for now, basically, it's really just making sure the floor plan shows windows correctly. Um, but it also is quite helpful because it allows me to really see what the orientation of my room is in the wireframe as well as in geometry. The other thing I'm going to do probably is add in this futon thing here. I'm going to snap on the uh, snap tool there. And when I'm drawing these kind of volumes, I'm always drawing on a surface. And you can see the current surface highlighted. Actually, I want to be sure that I don't lose the connection with the surface. So I'm going to be careful not to move the bottom of the, uh, the volume because in that case, I don't know where uh, where my volume is anymore, because we're kind of in the position where we're adding 3D information to a, a 2D thing, and we have to be a little bit careful to sort of work from the, the 3D uh, planes we know, which is one of the reasons why leveling is so important. You know, we know where our floor is and where our wall planes are, but everything else is just imagery projected into the space. And in order to reconstruct it accurately, we have to work off the surfaces that we know. For example, here. Um, I can click in here and, and, and pull this out. Um, I'm going to work to find this front corner first. So once I've got that right, then I can kind of push back and find the back corner. Um, uh, over here, we've got a bunch of holes that are going to um, cut through to other rooms. Um, and we do those using the door tool. So in fact, the other rooms are already built in this tour. Um, so I can actually just go ahead and choose the pre-existing doors that belong to the other rooms and place them. Um, so I'm going to go here, and we've got entrance hall, salon one. Well, I should have named it, but it's good because it's got a nice shape so I can work out where it goes. I don't know why that's short, but I'm going to fit it there. Um, and entrance hall, so the other one must be salon five. Nice. And then this actual section is part of the kitchen. I know that because I built it earlier. So I'm going to go to the kitchen, and it's kitchen to salon. And we're going to place that in. I'll make sure the floor line is good. Now, it's a little long because, in fact, the, in the other room, it meets up with the, uh, the beam. But because we're actually meeting with this wall, we're going to shorten it. It doesn't matter. It will still fit together perfectly uh, when we assemble the tour. Oh, and up here, there's another one. 
Um, so that is upstairs salon, view downstairs. And that guy, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Um, and we can pop him in between the curtains just there. Looks about right. Um, so that's a good start. Um, probably probably a good idea to be easier if I actually... Um, oh, which one is this? No, that's a vertical one. Pull this this way a little, which means that comes up a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to use the same size piece because we can kind of guesstimate that they're probably the same height. So I just use Control C and Control V to copy the volume, and now I'm pushing it. Oops. Sometimes uh, the handles get confused about which axis to use. In that case, just move the camera a bit, and it'll uh, it'll uh, get it right. So now I've copied and pasted that again. Um, and I'm just going to pull that out across there. Super quick. Here, um, we're going to add a bit of volume information for this. And mostly the reason I'm doing this is to help with snapping later. I mean, it, it will also improve the, the quality of movement um, when I move. Um, all right, let's get fancy. I'm going to pull this out and then we can we've got wedges now so i can go here and move the wedge um and i could probably put a cushion on there as well take that um, and pull in that way just pull that up so we got, we got something like that um but that's really probably all we kill i'm i'm just mucking about now um over here same kind of deal i just want to pull up that arm in fact it's really not always worth doing this kind of detail and it's a question of how much time you have certainly you can make a workable tool without it but um it can it can improve the quality of things um and we have got quite a few panoramas in this room so there is a fair bit of movement going to happen um so uh, could could be yeah, could 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 make a difference. Um, the back there, we're really not going to see much of that. So I'm just going to oops, uh, copy that guy, push him all the way down, pull him out, and just lift it up so we've got the top line. So that's going to help us with um, aligning the other panoramas. Um, so for now, or one other thing I want to do, because I've got a panorama behind this, I'm going to pull this volume out. Um, so again, quickly mark that, lift it up. We can see the black actually comes over the edge there, so I'm not lining up perfectly with that, and I want to be just short of the black there. Pull that back to here, and lift it up. So now we've got this guy. And then finally, um, I've got this spectacular chimney. Um, can't reach the top of that. So what I'm actually going to do is, it's a bit of a guesstimate, but I'm going to draw him down from the ceiling. Um, so we're going to pull a cylinder, something like that. Always a bit big, that one. Uh, up the top. A little bit big. So I'll pull him like that, try and get him roughly centered. And then uh, we're, we're, we're almost certainly going to have to move him a bit later, but now I can bring it down to the separate that. So that's the basics for this room. The next step would be to go through all the other panels quickly. I'm going to hide the visual guides because I don't need them, and I'm going to level them. Um, so I'm just going to, because I do need them all to be leveled. It is possible um, there is an alternative workflow where you level using the snapping tool, but um, uh, we find this is a much faster approach. Um, so this is what we recommend. So I've done my two. Usually I only need two. Uh, minimum, but I prefer to use three level lines just to make sure. Um, very quick. What are we at? 20 minutes. Um, another one here, and one more over here. Um, right, next one, 
Now, there is an automatic leveling um, option, um, and we could try to use it. However, we've got a lot of outside um, stuff. It does tend to work when you've got noise-free images with not too much detail. And you have this kind of detail through the windows here. Um, tends to get confused, so that's why I'm not using it at the moment. Um, but if you're in a hurry, it's worth trying with that first, because um, it does save a few minutes when it works. Um, but it is always a good idea to verify if things are actually level, rather than just assuming it's doing its job, because uh, there are often false positives in the uh, level detection algorithm. So here I don't really have a choice. I'm going to use the, uh, the plaster, and it didn't didn't jump about. So I think we got a good good level there. And now we're at the top of the stairs. And that's that. That's that. And what else? Um, we'll do this one. I like this nice long one. It's good. Generally speaking, longer is better. Um, doesn't affect the math precision, but does uh, help with uh, uh, precision in terms of, of, of the actual leveling. Okay, so um, I'm in here. I switch on my visual guides and get rid of the grid. We can now see our geometry versus our actual panorama. And we're going to go to the third tool here, the snap tool. Um, and I'm going to position it where it should be by dragging the geometry to the place in the room that I think it should be. This is somewhere about there. And you can see we did a fairly good first try. We come up here now. Um, so I've got a, and you can kind of start to see how the geometry helps me snapping uh, my stuff together. So this guy is clearly not far enough over. So I'm going to just nudge him like this bit. And um, this is kind of an iterative process. We are actually working on an interactive alignment tool, which will allow you to kind of drag and see what's happening rather than having to click and click and snap, click and snap. Um, so that will help to make that much easier. So I think we're pretty good for that. I'm um, going to go to the next one. Um, again, pick the snap point, kind of guesstimate where it should be for the first point uh, and he's on the snow but he's there I'm gonna pop him over here somewhere and it's pretty good again um, I'm using all these different references to kind of work out whether I've got my points in the right place and you can see how the sort of the 3d volumes really help with the location and make it much faster assuming of course that um, your 3d volumes um, and your room shape is actually uh, I'm gonna, there we go. That should be good. I think this. Let's come over this way a bit. That needs to go back here. A lot more. The windows are pretty good. Um, we're not bad there. Back a little bit maybe. Ah, it's feeling quite nice. Everything's feeling pretty good. And so as we start to do this, we can actually start to move around in the room and we can see that things are starting to work. Um, so quickly do uh, the other ones. Um, so if I get lost, this guy down the bottom here. And oops, we'll do that, do that. Maybe over here somewhere. Once again, he's not in the corner enough. Push him all the way into the corner. Not bad. 
that just a little bit further. Uh, looks really good. I actually maybe could go further even. Um, yeah, definitely a little bit further. And looking at these corners here when I did that, it's good. I think we're pretty good there. Two more to go. Okay, so this is interesting. This one, we're halfway up the stairs. So we're going to have to do quite a lot of work with the height. In order to make that work, I'm actually going to go back to here on the reference panorama. And I always try and draw as much as possible of the geometry with the ref panel. Um, uh, ref panel. Hold on. Ooh, we have a bug. Let's step back now. There we go. I think I did an undo just now, which may have upset something. There we go. All right. Well, in those kind of situations, uh, it's just best to hit undo. So now we're back uh, with our ref panel not messed up. Um, what I'm going to do is draw this volume here. Um, and as I said, I try to draw the volumes mostly on the ref panel, and that means that we don't, if any of the other panoramas aren't lined up perfectly, we don't inherit the kind of error. Um, and then, so now we've got that platform there. I'm actually going to pull this down, do the staircase, just could be as well. Um, probably should have been the other axis, but never mind. Pull that through there. And now we've kind of got our staircase. It's a little bit... The snap shouldn't be on because it's not quite the angle, not quite the 15 degrees. So there we go. Um, so now I can pop back to my staircase one um, and do the same as I've done before. But now I've got a, a new volume reference, which will make it easier to position everything where it should be. We can see, if I go to the plan view, we can see that we're pretty much um, pretty much in the right place already. Pretty good. Um, so there we go. And now we've got our, our panel up, up there at the top of the stairs. Um, So the next thing will be to chuck in a volume at the top of the stairs here. So I'm drawing on this wall, snap on, back down to the corner of the room there. I'm just going to pull that out. Can't quite see where that goes to, but I think that's close enough. And I'm going to pull this guy out here a little further and snap off, drag him down. And we got a little, little piece there. Uh, so that's good. So now um, I can go back up here and uh, do my last, do my last panorama, which is the top of the stairs there. Again, just look around, find my sofa in wireframe, pick that snap point. Um, and and as you can see, even though I can't directly see the point, thanks to, so I can see that, and it's going to probably be out there. Thanks to the uh, the geometry and the volumes, I can pretty easily work out where things need to go. Um, so we're just going to pop them in there, pop them in there. Looks pretty good. And actually, we have a panorama view. We can just look at this. And in fact, look, we're dead on with the chimney as well, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so what remains is to do these banisters. Um, so we're going to make use of the nice um, tool for, I'm just going to bring that up to about there. Make a little plane, lift it up to where this meets. So I've got a it's a bit thick maybe. 
something like that. Copy it. Lift him up to there. And then we're going to use this nice uh, select edge to remove tool, the wedge tool. Oops, got to select that guy. Probably, oops, we need to zoom in a bit. Select edge to remove. Now we've got a super. Um, and then what I can do is I can uh, I can select both of these using Shift Select, Control C, Control V, and then I can just move it up to get the second piece of the banister there. Um, that's pretty much all I need for that. And we can see that that's actually working pretty well. Um, and uh, I'll probably do the same thing up here. I'm actually going to go at the top. Uh, this is all in place. Um, and in fact, no, you know what? I can do it from down here because I already got the floor. Um, I'm going to select this guy. Um, drag this over a little bit. I think he's pretty much there. Lift him up. Maybe that's a little too far over. It's good. Something like that. And then what we can do um, is just Control C, Control V. Pull him forward to about here. We're lining him up with that bit there. Pull him down a bit. Down a bit. Um, and do the same thing we did before. Pull him down a bit. And then, oops, missed it. What happened there? Like so, and although we probably won't notice this, I'm going to be tidy and clean it up anyway. So there we got our banisters. Um, and then up the top here, we need, we've got a couple of doors to add to cut it through to the rest of the tour. Um, here, I think it's bedroom one. So looking for bedroom one. These are all the doors. Where is our bedroom one, bedroom to stairs. So we have to place it. Um, just going to pull that out. And this guy should be stairs, something or other, stairs, stairs nine, stairs, so not upstairs, that's that one, bathroom, bedroom two, so stairs nine, I think, it's the one, yep, looks like it's the one. And we're just going to line that up, and do any little adjustments we need to make sure. When it's red, it means that you're crossing a boundary and that means that it won't be actually used in the tour um, you need to make sure tours are green that means everything's okay so there's our room um and if we switch off everything we can actually kind of uh oh actually you need bubbles um we can now move around it um and uh, and see kind of what we got so that's neat um that's pretty much it for the room editor. One thing to mention um, while we're doing this is that the lens height parameter here, um, which is under the select panorama tool, um, is what we use to triangulate all the dimensions. So if you want dimensions to appear correctly in uh, in the floor plan, or you want in, indeed the uh, VR view scale to appear correct, uh, the subjective scale from the stereo, um, you need to have the lens height set that correctly. You can actually go set that in the default settings, um, where you can also choose metric or imperial and set the lens height, which will be the default lens height for all new rooms when they're created. Um, uh, but you can also modify it per room uh, if necessary. Um, so that's our room. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back and open the tour editor. Um, and over here we can see all the rooms that we built um, down here in the in the uh, the stack on the left. Um, and so I'm going to start assembling my uh, my tour. I'm going to start by dragging in the uh, entrance hall into the plan view. Um, and we can see here uh, we've got basically three views in the tour. There's a plan view, there's the model view, and we can see our entrance hall. Um, and there's the preview, which is actually where we see. Uh, what the actual tour UI will look like um, in the published tour. So this is the actual published tour UI. And here we've got the set of controls for setting that up. Um, I'm going to go back to the plan view. Um, right now it says no floor assignment. I'm actually just bringing in 
models into the tour without having a floor assigned to them. We're going to go to dining room, I think, next. And you notice they automatically snap together. This is because the, the share, when I created them, I made sure the doors were shared between the different spaces, so they automatically slap into place um, when uh, I drag them into the into the plan view. Um, so the final thing, there's the original salon, but we're going to take salon webinar, the one I made, bring that in, um, and we can see it snap into place. Um, sometimes you can want to make a little nudge. Oops, there's a Oh, that's the upstairs drawer. That's okay. So one thing about so all of these are ground floor uh, elements. So I'm actually going to go in here and create a new floor. Now floors in the tour editor are really just a conceptual grouping. They don't have anything to do with height necessarily. You may have a floor of a house that exists on several levels and want to be able to do that. Um, so if I go back to no floor assignment, I can now select these other floors and just other rooms and just add them to that floor um, it would be helpful to have multi select uh, and we'll do that eventually um, so now I've got my ground floor and my rooms on the ground floor we're missing I think just the, uh, the downstairs washroom um, so that's that um, the next thing I want to do is add the second floor because right now everything is on the ground floor actually we've got a room that's not baked yet so I'm actually gonna we can see a flashing icon there is actually hidden under the my, my webinar UI so I can see it but so with that we can now see we've got our 3d model with uh, including the one we just built um, and uh, we've got some doors up the top here and what we wanted to be able to do is add our new rooms at the top so if we go back to the plan view what we can do um, is for the salon webinar we'll go and create a first floor um, and now we've got two controls, ground floor and first floor, and they'll correspond to floor controls in the published tour. Um, so now if I select first floor, salon webinar is still visible, what I can actually do is start adding rooms, and they'll be added to this current floor, and you can see they snap into place um, because they share doors um, uh, with the other and looks about right. So now I've got my tour with my two floors. If I go in my model view, we can see that we've got our entire um, building interior. Now, the next thing to look at is the navigation map. So I've pulled, switched on navigation map, and we can see that um, in the plan view or in the model view. It's quite helpful to see it in the model view because you can really see which panoramas are connected to which other panoramas. Now, by default, we make sure that any panorama is connected to any panorama it can see. So we don't have connections going through walls. However, it does tend to make connections sometimes that are not navigations that um, are going to be comfortable for, for people. So what we can do is we can actually select these navigation, these panoramas, and just remove the ones that don't make sense. Like we don't want to fly through the wall here, even though there's a hole. Um, we probably, all these are probably fine, although that might not be good. If I need to focus on a given room, I can actually click on that room. And um, We don't want to be flying through the table here. Uh, we want to be going around uh, the table so we can disconnect all these transitions that go through, all these navigations that go through furniture and just leave the ones that correspond to routes people could actually walk if they're in the space. Um, I think this one ought to be connected to that one there, however. So I'm going to add a new one there. I'm going to get rid of this one here. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Now what we can do is we can go to our preview and just navigate around, see what we've got. Um, everything's looking pretty good there. Oops, uh, we're missing a door here. What did I do? Oh, I forgot to put that door in. I was there. Um, so actually, coming over here, there is actually one opening this other side that we have to put in place. Um, it is dining room to salon. Um, it's a big guy, and it's this whole end piece here, the end of this room. So I'm going to just pop it in place. So I need to cut that end of that room out. So go back to our tour.
and uh, now it's working. So that's why that panorama wasn't connected because I forgot to do that. So there you can see we're, we're now uh, pretty good. I'm going to set a tour starting point. Um, so probably not going crazy, but something like this where we can kind of see it. So we can do that by say setting tour starting point and that actually generates the thumbnail that we use uh, with the tour. Um, we can choose whether we wanted to start in tour view or in model view. Some folks like model view and then we can choose which menu components and what states we want. So we can have show buttons by default. We'll have this open when the tour starts. We can choose whether or not the floor plan or a model is included. The rooms chooser. Um, we can choose whether it's going to be used, whether it's going to have names or um, in fact, whether we're going to show it by default. Um, takes up quite a lot of screen space. So if your primary target is mobile, we tend to switch that off by default. Then you can choose to have a title and location. Um, I haven't added any text, but um, uh, something like that. Um, and then we can put the address. Blah, 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 blah. Um, we've also got some control for field of view limits because without them, you can kind of go crazy and maybe you don't want your uh, users to be able to do that. Um, you can add a logo, which if you add it here, will appear at the top right of the screen in the player. You can add a custom thumbnail. So although we've generated the thumbnail using the starting point, if you add a custom thumbnail, for example, it could be an exterior view of the building, you can add that instead. And you can also add uh, your Nadir logo if you want, and that will replace uh, the Nadir. Um, that's controlled by the size setting of the Nadir here. Um, um, so that's pretty much it for those two. I'm actually going to, so we're going to close the room editor, pop back to the project dashboard, um, and now we can publish it. Now I've already got a published version here. Um, however, if I go hit publish, what's going to happen is it's going to generate a new published version. Um, so in this way, you can actually have various different versions of your tours, maybe with different navigation, different starting points, these kind of things. Um, or maybe you've got one that's for a mobile, one that you want to change something for a different experience, um, this kind of thing. Um, and you're able to, to do that all in the same tour. You don't have to like copy the whole tour. However, if you've got downstream integrations, for example, as a listing service or something that's linking to the tour, you want to be able to update the tour without changing the URL. And that's what this button's for. So here, you can actually republish to an existing URL. Um, uh, so you're able to push new content for the tour or updates or fixes without breaking the downstream integration. Um, the other option you have is you can take a tour offline without deleting it. So you've got a published version. You can take it offline. I don't know, maybe your customer didn't pay or something. So you can actually uh, hide it for a while and then bring it back whenever you like. There's also a third option here. Um, which is the uh, embed option. So there's an embed code. If you want to embed it in another page, uh, you've got a preview of it here. Um, and this is actually the one we just published. So this is, this is the room we just built. Um, and that shows you what's happening there. Um, so that's about it for those bits and pieces. Um, I'll pop back. Did we cover everything? I think we did. Um, with regard to publishing, basically the same tour works in terms of um, uh, uh, in the web browser viewing as opposed to, to in web VR viewing. So if you've got any web VR browser, Oculus Go, Oculus Rift, uh, Google Cardboard, whatever, you can actually open the tour. Um, and it'll just, uh, there's an option to switch it into VR mode. Um, and I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, um, that's pretty much it. Um, are there any questions um, before I close up? Um, go ahead and, and pop them in the chat if you do. What does the export button do? Ah, good question. So export, um, basically depending on your uh, depending on your uh, uh, subscription um, plan, subscription level, you've got various options. You can export the floor plan as a 2D DXF. Um, you can create 3D models, FBX, OBJ or, um, files uh, for the, the 3D model. Um, 
You can also, uh, there's some options which are more administration only. We, we have the ability, for example, for debugging purposes to package a project and um, uh, uh, that's kind of an internal tool. Um, you can also export your panoramas. So if you've uploaded panoramas and you, you've been storing the system and you want to get them back for whatever reason, you can export panorama archive. Exactly which options you have depends on your subscription level. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, one other thing I guess we can show you is here um, is a PDF. This is a sample floor plan. It's in French, but when you order a uh, a high quality floor plan, it'll come uh, uh, as a PDF. These are actually vector PDF, um, so you can um, using uh, any any kind of PDF editing, uh, vector editing tool, Illustrator, whatever. You can extract this and blow it up to whatever size you like. Um, but this is the kind of uh, this is kind of thing that the uh, the floor plans look like when they come back. Obviously, in your language of choice, um, and that's what you get when you, you order this guy here. Um, all righty. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for uh, the, uh, the tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or there's any follow-up, if there's any other ones I'm looking in here. Oh, Jim. <laughs> okay, yeah, Jim. Okay, um, let's take a look at that. Uh, I can show you an example. Here is uh, the Hotel de Calvet, uh, which is a... 17th century hotel um, in Montreal. As you can see, the rooms are really not, like the dining room is not even close to square. Um, it makes it a little more tricky to build, but essentially um, um, uh, it still works. So here um, I've got the space. Um, it's a rather beautiful dining room. Um, and uh, you can still build it. You just have to do a bit more work, making sure things are lining up and you can't rely as you can see, this wall here is is definitely not a straight wall, um, but uh, it's totally it's totally still totally possible to, to build things. You just have to do a little bit more. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, uh, Mayar, I hope I'm getting your name right. Um, can we order our tour to become offline? Yeah, well, so simply, um, if you want to sort of restrict a tour from being uh, a given published version of a tour from being accessible online, you can just uh, switch it offline like that. Um, future work for us is to allow you to um, control access to specific customers via passwords. We haven't done that yet, and that's something that we're working on for the future. Um, oh, to download it. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, our tours are, because the way the tours work, they're actually streamed um, interactively. So when I open a tour like this, oops, I guess that one's not there anymore. This is a quite an old project. Um, <laughs> okay, well, um, fine. Dealing with a project that's actually published. Um, uh, when we go to when when we look at a tour, um, there. Uh, no, I'll pull one of these gallery ones up because I know they're all there. Um, they're actually being streamed dynamically, so it's not a file so much as a collection of data that streams as you move around. Um, so as you as you move, um, the uh, the the tour uh, gets gets streamed dynamically, and this means that no matter how big your tour is, we can always open the uh, open the tour very quickly. Um, but it does mean that um, there's a fairly sophisticated kind of dynamic uh, infrastructure that's gathering up the, the the tiles. We we don't send you whole panoramas when you're moving around. We just stream the tiles that you're looking at, and then add the other ones as you move around and things like that. Um, so it's quite interactive and there's this kind of stream of tiles. We do envisage eventually um, addressing that somehow, um, at least letting you store the content like for the tour um, on your own, uh, in your own storage. Um, but the uh, the tour engine, the player will probably always be hosted um, on, our, on our service. Um, however, you can export 3D models um, if you have uh, the, the, the appropriate subscription plan. Um, so um, there's a way to get, um, you know, get some some 3D data, and maybe you can use it in another platform. Um, uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, so we've got we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, if there are if are there any are there any other questions um, before I wind up? 
as I say, uh, the video of this, uh, we've been recording it. Um, we will make it available uh, to you guys probably via YouTube afterwards. Can you export to Unity from Thomas? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Well, so Unity supports FBX files. So um, you can, um, in theory, uh, export to FBX, and you can load that up in Unity. Um, however, what we export is really, at the moment, it's the uh, it's the model, the 3D model. So it's 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 a fairly basic model with fairly basic texturing. We are doing a lot of work to improve this over time, and uh, we expect that uh, it'll become, uh, you know, the plan is for it to become much, much higher quality soon. But yeah, already, I mean, you could already take this to Unity, um, um, and uh, it'll probably be sort of minimally useful. At the moment, what it's really aimed at is making sure that the uh, navigation experience, you know, the movement is, is 3D and proportional when you move between panoramas. Um, over time, what we plan to do is make it so that um, it's a high quality model with high quality texturing that you can you can export for integration in whatever other package, Unity, uh, Revit, architectural packages, uh, whatever you like. Um, okay, did I miss any other questions? Doesn't look like it. One minute left. So I think I'll, I'll move ahead to wind up. Um, so first of all, thanks so much for your time and for um, choosing to spend an hour with us. Um, I hope it was useful. Um, we've uh, it's kind of tried to be a quick overview. There's obviously a bunch of things I haven't been able to cover. Um, I did manage to talk a little bit about staircases, which I'm real happy. That's probably the most challenging thing to build um, uh, in in uh, in stage. Um, eventually, we, we hope to have a kind of dedicated staircase tool, but for now, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. Um, so, um, with that, um, I'll just quickly reprise what we covered. Um, so, we did a quick interface overview. We covered the photography guidelines. I went through quickly the tour editing workflow. We did a deep dive in the room editor, the tour editor, and how you work with those two tools. And uh, we looked at publishing. So. Uh, Thanks so much for your time. Um, I hope uh, you'll actually uh, spend uh, and, and have some success building tours with Material. If you need any help, we're always online. You can just use a little chat box, um, and there's almost always somebody there. Um, um, Isabel's uh, 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 based um, uh, on the other side of the world from us, so there's always pretty much always somebody up. Um, and uh, so um, I think that's it for us. Um, Thank you very much indeed. And uh, like I say, we'll let you know when uh, this is posted online. All right, have a great day. Cheers.